Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. If you guys are new here, I am Jess. This is Kel. If you guys have been here for a while, welcome back. We are gonna do another story time for you guys today. We have been asked to do a story time about this a lot, so we figured, let's do it. Let's get right to it. We are gonna talk about our breakups today. <laughs> Before we get into it, we would like to thank the sponsor for this video, HelloFresh. As you guys know, we are giant fans of HelloFresh. We love them, we love their food, and we thank them for sponsoring this video. You can get seasonal simple recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door every single week. Fresh pre-measured ingredients and easy to follow six step pictured recipe cards are delivered to your door each week in a special insulated box. There are three plans to choose from, classic, veggie, and family, with the option to switch between for when your tastes change. HelloFresh is now from $6.99 per serving and it is America's number one meal kit. If you guys are interested in trying out HelloFresh, get started right now. You're actually going to get 8 meals free, which if you're counting that's $80 off your first month of HelloFresh. Just make sure that you go to HelloFresh.com and use our promo code KELLENJESS80. So I guess to get into it, there are a lot of people that were confused about what I put on my <laughs> Instagram saying like, wait, what, Th this is a joke, right? And stuff like, the, what I meant was to talk about the breakups we've had in the past. Yeah. Or some people, some people had the assumption of you guys have never broken up and that's not true. We're going to talk about some of the times that we broke up or some people assumed that there were a lot of breakups. Um, I don't know if there, would you consider that there was a lot? I don't think so, but I was talking to Markel yesterday and I don't know if it's because it's in the past. I won't Your breath stinks. I'm gonna put him down. Okay. No! I'm sorry. But I have a hard time remembering most of our breakups, but I, I don't feel like there was a lot. I don't, but I don't know. I, I would say there's more than normal. Probably. For people that ultimately end up together. <laughs> but a big reason for that too was that I was in high school for three years of our relationship while she was like not. I would say that's like the biggest contribu contributor to having multiple breakups. I also was, I was young and trying to figure things out and just had no clue. I would also say a contributing factor is the fact that um, we were closeted and very secretive. Nobody knew about us. And so, not that I'm a fan of venting about your relationship to people, but there was nobody to talk to. Right. If that makes sense. So all our frustrations were always taken out on each other. It was usually just like... Okay, well then let's not be together. You yeah. know, it would be something that simple because you don't have that friend or family member, whoever, to say to you, it's just a fight. Like, right, to get advice don't from. Don't overreact, give it a night or whatever. Right. So those I think are two big contributing factors as to why we had a lot of breaks. So that was one of the assumptions was you were young and still figuring yourselves out. Absolutely, yeah. that's 100% true. Me especially, I think that I did that way more than you did. Uh, yeah, because it's so hard when, when you're Mormon, which we've talked about that we grew up Mormon, you're not even supposed to officially date until you're 16 or older. Right. I met her when I was 14. So I wasn't even supposed to technically date yet. Yeah. So then I turned the dating age and it's like, cool, I can date now, but I'm secretly dating her, but I'm also getting asked on dates into like school dances and all this stuff by guys that, you know, some of them I had 
some sort of relationship with in the past and it was a really weird time. I was a pushover and so a lot of times I like would go on a date because I didn't want to make the guy feel bad which is like not a problem that I struggle with at all anymore but it was back then. I didn't know how to tell guys no so I went on a lot of dates that weren't necessarily what I wanted and you know yeah. a lot of that caused trouble with us obviously <laughs> so yes that is definitely true and i take most if not completely all of the blame on that one i did some figuring out though too like i did it too i don't think you're 100 percent direct blame probably the number one assumption that we got was that it was due to religion um, feeling unsupported by family, um, pressure to be, I guess, somebody that we're not type of a thing. Um, that's true. Whoa. <laughs> I think that's true to a point. Um, there is one specific breakup, and I do think I kind of address it in my coming out video that was a breakup due to feeling pressure from a religion type family situation where I finally, I was feeling overwhelming pressure to just satisfy everybody that I just was like, fine, I'll give everybody what they want. And that's for me to be in our religion and to be like a kind of a, they call it a Molly Mormon, like follow the righteous path and find a return missionary yeah i was getting a lot of pressures which like i don't necessarily fault anybody for it but ultimately it made me break i would say that was our biggest breakup yeah. so we'll kind of expand on that um our families had just found out yes. about us and it wasn't like we voluntarily told them they found out and it wasn't going well no um, we weren't supposed to be around each other anymore. Our families didn't want us to do that. And for me, I lived at home, so it was pretty much impossible to make that happen. Um, I remember I was on the phone with you one night and it was like, we were talking and she was like, we just got to stick with each other through this. We'll get through it. It'll be okay. We'll lean on each other, make each other stronger. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Agreed. <laughs> and then she's like, oh, I'll call you back. My sister's calling. And didn't call me back, didn't call me back, didn't call me back. So I called her back once and she didn't answer it. And I could tell she was on the other line. Called again, she finally answers it. And I can't remember if you were crying. I was. And she just basically said like, I just had to talk with my sister and you know, I don't even really remember the specifics, but basically that she wanted to break up. She was going to try to pursue a life <laughs> of choosing the right. <laughs> and that crushed me. It was like the worst time, one of the worst times in my life ever, because I'm going through this terrible experience of being outed almost in a way. Yeah. Um, obviously just a family and thinking like, oh, we can, we'll stick together. We'll get through this. And then all of a sudden I lose you too. Well, and it being hard because we were outed, but we also weren't supported, if that makes sense. Yeah, not like, at all. Like we didn't have support of like, it's okay. Like you're okay. This is okay. It was nothing like that. So it was... Uh, uh, and even like a, if you want to be together, like we understand it's not what we want, but it right. is what it is. It was, it, was, no, it was nothing. You cannot see her. You cannot be around her. All that. Yeah. So to be going through like a life changing, horrible thing like that. And then for her to decide, actually, I'm going to try to to go the religious route and I don't want to be together anymore it was horrible. That was a very dark time Yeah. in 
16 year old Markel's life. <laughs> but I, I would say that was the only breakup that we had that was religion based or I agree probably like pressured from yeah anything. I would agree with that but it was our biggest one and yeah. I think our longest one and when we say longest speaking of we're gonna tie that into another question that we had was that they were never long yeah one assumption was that they were always short or they didn't last long whatever which was true I would say that's true yeah but and this one was probably our longest one and honestly I think it was only a couple weeks. No. Wrong. Okay, no. let me. It wasn't. Okay. It was. Like it was a longer. Whole summer. But I, I definitely dangled a carrot in front of you big time. For like the entire summer. For the entire summer. And then I think was that when you were finally like enough, and I. Was yeah, like, you want to know how it freaking worked out? Is she was like stringing me along, and yes. I was. In my head, I was like, if I'm just like the best person I can be and I remain like her close friend and still show her love and that I'll do anything for her, she'll, we'll eventually get back together. I really just thought that that would happen. And when finally it got to a point where I was like, I don't even know who you're being anymore. It's really pathetic. <laughs> She's using you. You're better than this. You deserve better than this. And I finally told her one day, I was like, I'm done. I've had enough, you know, because she, you were doing very horrible things I to was. me. I was, I definitely was. On top of just being like, yeah, yeah, do all this for me. And so one day I was like, I'm done. It's, it is what it is. We'll call it and I'll move on. And that's of course when she snapped out of it and was like, never mind. I've had my fun. I've had my fun <laughs> for lack of. These just make us sound like we're such terrible human we were, beings. We were young. We were like, very young and we did- You're a kid. Everybody yeah. with your high school relationships did ridiculous things that you're not proud of and- But and not only that, but it was a relationship that we weren't supposed to be in. Yeah. Which makes it like intensified by a billion. So, but that was a question of were they, they were always short and yes they were, they were never really long. We got a few that said they were never serious. Um, for the most part, I agree. Yeah. They were, the one that we just touched on was serious, for sure. And so hard. They were very, I would say they were more petty, if anything. Yeah, like that. that's so a good So our very, yeah. I forgot our very first breakup. In my head, our very first breakup has always been the one we talked about, our biggest one, but that wasn't our very first breakup. <laughs> Our very first breakup, we called each other names. We called each other bitches. <laughs> well, in a roundabout way, we did. There were things happening. You were kind of talking to a dude. Yeah. This is like how long ago and awful it was. But it was like getting to me and I could tell that you wanted to like check this out. And so we got in an argument over text and I didn't want to just like flat out call you a bitch, but I said, you're being a bitch. And my response was, it takes one to know one. Ooh. Right. So th that's like what our breakups were. So then it was like, okay, we're done. Um, and uh, I mean, I think that lasted a day. Yeah. There were some assumptions that were like, that you've never broken up. Yeah, we have broken up. Like I said, probably more than a regular couple that stayed together. But it's because we're a real couple. And, you know, maybe some people say we're goals or meant to be together or whatever. And I'm not saying that's not true. I hope that still is the case. But we're a real couple that went yeah. through real things and went through hard things together. Right. And came out of it and hopefully it got us to where we are, you know? There's, right. It's hard to say if it did, and there's things that I wish I could take back or do differently. Of course, if, if I had the chance, I think I would change it. And I even told her one time that if I was given the chance, I almost maybe would have told her to like, we need to be on a break for the rest of while I finish high school because I did so many things that I'm not proud of and that I know hurt her and that, sucks 
That sucks so bad to know that. But hopefully in the end it got us to where we are now and I know we wouldn't change that. We've been through some of the hardest of parts and we've gotten through it. And so that's why I'm like, I feel like we are, I feel like we're a very, very strong couple. Not to say we don't still have arguments like every other couple, but knowing the crap that we've been through and that we've came out on the other side only just solidifies it more to me that we're, we can make it through like anything. Yeah. So for me, at least, obviously I'm just speaking for myself, to know that you've forgiven me for certain things that I did and choices that I made, like that also shows me love, you know? Yeah. It's like I can mess up and do shitty things and she still forgave me, so that also is, I don't know. Vice versa. I don't though. even know if I'm making sense, but we both, here's the thing. It's not just you that's done shitty things. I did shitty things too. And I think the fact that we've both been able to truly forgive each other and never, we don't hold anything above each other's head ever. So another one is you weren't fully comfortable or openly proud about who you loved due to community around you. Uh, yeah, I, I think we've already pretty much touched on that, but we both grew up in a very small town. Everybody knows everybody. People love to be in your business. Like yeah. gossip is, they thrive on it. People knew stuff about you before you knew it about mm -hmm. yourself. I didn't get away with anything. If I ever snuck around to see her, I swear my Five mom minutes. knew before I was even home. Yeah. I don't know when it was that I finally started seeing that it was possible for us to be out. I don't, I have no idea when that was, but it was not, not sure. It wasn't horribly long ago. No. Because I really couldn't ever picture people that I grew up around knowing this about me. I would, if I had to guess a time period, and this is going to show you how recent it was, is I would probably more say that it was around the time that we started YouTube. I agree. I agree with that. Which because is not been that long. That was like, as you guys, if you don't know, that was essentially our coming out video. Yeah. Because very, a very, very small group of people knew about us. Like, very, very small. Very small. And our families knew because yes. they found out way before that. And they had pretty much, I think, during that time, like, come around to the... They accepted that it wasn't going to change. Yeah, and were a lot more accepting than we ever thought they were going to be. That played a huge role. There were seriously so many random people, people from our churches. Um, for me, yeah. I always thought about my ex-boyfriends and close friends, people that I played sports with. I always thought all the time, like, I never want them to know. I never want them to find out this about me or find out that Jess isn't my best friend, she's my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I never thought that I'd be able to get over that idea. So I say that more as wherever you're at in your journey with totally accepting yourself and being comfortable with the idea of coming out or people knowing about you, um, just know that it gets better once. Yes, I know it people does say that better. so much. Sounds like cliche. God, that freaking ice maker is having a day. I know that people use that term yeah. always when talking about coming out and being gay in general. I swear to you. I swear by it. It does. I think for years we were in a place that I would probably say that our answer would have been it's not going to get better. A million percent. I just talked. I just talked yeah. about this horribly dark time in my life where I seriously did not know what to do right. the next day, and yeah. now it's. I can't imagine a different life than this, and right. I wouldn't choose one. So, yeah, I, I, I answer that assumption more to. Just stay hang in there. If it's not great right now, it doesn't mean that it won't be. And if you can't see a way or a life, I guess, that makes sense with coming out, it doesn't mean that you won't right. one day. 
like I think I think we're examples of the fact that it does get better because I'm not saying that we what we went through isn't the hardest because I know that there is a lot more difficult stories out there than just ours. But like I said, I think there was a time that we would have said to each other that it's never going to get better. It's only going to be us two the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to be involved in our lives. No one's going to want to be involved in our lives. Yeah. And I think looking back now, like it is night and day to, <laughs> compared to where it was. So it does get better. Just, you just got to get through it. So the last one we're going to do is, even when you were broken up, you knew you would end up with each other in the end. I truly, even as hard as breakups have been or things that we've been through have been, deep down I was like, it's not over. Like I, it's, it was never over. <laughs> um, no, I really truly did not think it was over ever. Like as hard as whatever we were going through, as shitty as I felt, as shitty as she felt, I never felt like it's gonna be fine. I always had that like light that it's gonna be fine. I would say I only felt that the once that I talked about where I was like, I've just gotta accept this and move on. That was the only time that I felt that way and it wasn't because of myself. I definitely still had feelings for you and wanted to be together, but I thought that you weren't gonna let that happen. So I finally was just like, you owe yourself this, like move on. But that was the only time. Any other time, even if it was my choice, like I want, I want to break up or take a break or whatever. I definitely, deep down, always felt like it was like so inevitable that we were mm -hmm. just gonna be back together soon or eventually or right. whatever it is. It it did feel that way, and I even maybe one video one day I'll read it, but. One of my teachers made us write letters to our future selves. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they came like five fish years later. And I read it and I was like, I remember saying to you like, I, I sound so sad. Because I was, like I was going through that yeah. whole thing at the time. But in that letter, it's like, I don't know if you, and I wouldn't even write your name because I was so, so deep in the closet. Yeah. But I remember writing, I wonder if you're, in a relationship or married and I wonder if it's the person that you think it's gonna be and it was you yeah so I, I really truly had like yes it was young love and it was messy and whatever but I really really felt like this is it for me we wanted to do this video for a while yeah. but we didn't know how to do it because there's definitely people I've seen comments of People upset that our, when they find out our relationship wasn't perfect, yeah. you know, so we didn't know how to do it. And I think the only way to do it is just to be honest. And, yeah. You know, it is what it is. It's, it hasn't stopped us from being together and, you know, loving each other and getting right. through our tough times. So that's really all that matters. But yeah, yeah. thanks for sending those assumptions in because that kind of gave us a pathway to talk about it. Well, and that's like the biggest thing that I was like, I don't know how to do it. I don't want to like air out every dirty yeah, pair of right. underwear that we have. <laughs> like, I want to keep it, like, I'm going to tell information, but I'm like, I don't want to just share everything. Right. So right. It, it gave us kind of an outline and <laughs> yeah. So, so thank you guys. And I hope that you still like us after that. Hey, maybe you needed some drama for your Thursday. Or when this goes up, it might be Sunday. So thank you guys so much for watching. We love you guys for sticking through everything with us. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye.